Yes, thank you. It, you know, Internet of Things is such a big topic, and uh, Peter's lead-in really uh, displayed that a little bit. It, it's commercial, industrial, agricultural, um, and residential and consumer. And the, and the residential and consumer piece is what Enomi is focused on. And it's really about, at the end of the day, it's about the user experience, because uh, uh, we observed a few things about that that I'll kind of go through. Um, but uh, everything's going to be connected. Uh, you know, all of the TVs, the lights, the locks, um, the appliances, uh, just about everything in your house, and that doesn't even, you know, uh, really mention vehicles and wearable accessories. Uh, but everything will be connected. Now, thermostats are just an example of this, just, just an illustration, uh, because it's sort of, it's, it's likely to be the first connected device that actually goes in your home that replaces an old thing that was unconnected. Uh, and this is an example of, here we are in 2015, 40% of the thermostats sold today are connected. Next year it'll be 50%, the year after that it'll be 60. All <coughs> things are following this pattern. Uh, the other observation is that people aren't buying these things as systems, as kits. They're buying them one at a time. They're buying the Nest thermostat. Then they're buying a Sono speaker, and they're buying a Fitbit. They're buying things that suit them, just as we always have uh, with things in our homes. We're not buying kits, which mean, which makes us all casually connected consumers. We're not buying automation systems. We're buying great products one at a time, um, and uh, that's great. That's what we should be doing. The trouble with that is that connected devices were not designed to work together. Things that you're buying, the ones that I just mentioned, and the ones that you can see up here represented, are great islands of functionality. Fantastic, beautiful, highly useful islands of functionality. But they share no common context, and they're not coordinated in their control in any way. Um, and you know me is here to fix that, because we believe very strongly that the whole should be greater than the sum of the parts. Right now, with these things in silos, the whole is not greater than the sum. So that's what we set out to do when we built the company. Uh, and we took a look around and said, okay, who's solving this problem? Somebody must be solving this problem, right? Um, and we found various solutions and we thought that they were all inadequate for mainstream consumers. One, there are people building hubs, controller boxes, basically super routers uh, that can control all of the different things in your house. Those are expensive, they're complex, and they're susceptible to obsolescence very, very quickly. Uh, and we've seen a lot of money invested in that end of it and a lot of money lost. Uh, there are cloud services. IFT, people are familiar with if this then that, is one of those that may connect to various digital things. Uh, those are great, but they're very simplistic and they're limited in their reach because they can only talk to things that talk to the cloud. And not everything, even if it's a connected device, actually talks to the cloud. They can have a clumsy user experience. Then there are people building ecosystems. Apple, one of the world's great companies, has done that. Google has also done that. But they are creating essentially de facto standards that they're trying to get a bunch of manufacturers to adopt and say that's the way things are going to work together. But I've got news for you. Um, uh, all the things that come into your house are not going to be part of a single ecosystem. There are going to be multiple things that come into your house. So we still need to solve that. Those aren't going to solve your basic problems. So we did something very, very different than what almost anybody else has done. We've simultaneously leveraged both the infinite power of the processing and storage capability of the cloud and the ubiquity of mobile devices as a way to be able to essentially discover, communicate with, and control essentially <coughs> any device that will come into your home, into a modern connected home. Um, and that makes us uh, very unique. Oh, it's got really funky on this thing, so I, I apologize. Maybe a little bit hard to read uh, the consequence of moving from a Mac to a PC sometimes. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit more about how this works. But here's a short video that uh, depicts how your life with connected devices should work. Now here's a guy living with a few connected devices. He wakes up, the light turned on. He knew he was awake. The thermostat will start warm the house. The Sono speaker will tell him what the weather is going to be today. The coffee maker will come on. He's not pushing buttons. 
He's not opening apps or doing various things. He's living his life, and his devices are doing what they should do. He gets a phone call, the ringer on his phone is off. The lights blink to tell him that the phone just rang. He answers it, the music mutes while he's talking on the phone. I'm on my way. Hangs up the phone, the music comes back on. Again, going about his life. He's not thinking about technology. If we do it right, the user interface should be mostly invisible. Now he's going to leave the house, the lights will go off, the music will go off, the temperature will turn down. This is what living with connected devices should be like. And everything that you saw depicted in here, a lot more, is already available today with you. This is shipping, it's available on iOS and Android. A free app is all it takes to enable these things, as well as the connected gear that goes with it. But you're gonna get that anyway. So your devices, at the end of the day, they're better together. They're great individually, but they're better together. The you know the user experience we think is very unique uh, and, uh, and something that is very accessible. It's not only is it a free app, but it's very easy to use. Our mantra has been, this has to be easy enough for my mom to use. <laughs> my mom. And that's a very high bar. <laughs> uh, and so you install you know me, a free app. It automatically discovers the connected devices that you already own. It presets up uh, several routines, ways to automate those things together. What should happen when I wake up, when I get an incoming call, when I arrive home. It does that for you, kind of curates that along the way, so it pre-bakes a few things for you, and then allows you to go uh, set up things, customize them however you want. But really, in less than two minutes, you have this thing working, and it's kind of set and forget. After that, you don't really need to think about it. You don't very often need to take out the app. Um, it just does these things for you and it makes your life better. Um, here's an interesting one about if my baby wakes up in the middle of the night he's wearing a wearable baby monitor, uh, that the Sonos speaker in the nursery plays a lullaby and the lights sort of change. Uh, if we can buy parents 10 more minutes of sleep, uh, <laughs> then I think they've done something really important. Um, but what's great about it is that once devices are integrated into this thing, uh, the, the possibilities are endless. Anything basically that you can think up that you might want to automate or make more convenient, you can do in the applications that powerful, a very powerful rules engine, um, and, a, and, a, and a very powerful platform. Um, one by one, we're integrating with all the popular connected devices. Right now, there are 50 of the most popular mainstream consumer connected devices. Sonos, Jawbone, August, uh, Philips Hue, uh, all of these things uh, we work with today, and we're adding uh, approximately five more every month at this point. Um, so we, we have uh, very good coverage of things that are likely to show up in your house. Now, the way that we uh, acquire users is we're a small company. Uh, user acquisition is very difficult. We're not going to run any Super Bowl ads anytime soon. We intend to work with uh, partners who have a big footprint, and a big voice, and a large megaphone, uh, and also have a stake in making the Internet of Things awesome for mainstream consumers to help us tell our story. Um, and we have several such partners, partnerships that are in the work. Many of them are confidential right now. One that's not is Target. So Target uh, has a big stake in the outcome for Internet of Things. They believe that it's one of the uh, largest new merchandising categories uh, that's, that w has emerged and will uh, grow over the next decade. Um, so they want to be able to be a leader in this. Uh, to that end, uh, they have begun this journey by building a uh, iconic store in San Francisco called Open House, which is a demonstration store for living with connected things. And everything they show in this store, and it's quite, quite an amazing thing, next time you're in San Francisco, check it out. Uh, it's sort of like an Apple store for the connected home. Um, but they have 60 different connected devices that are available in the store, but they have built this acrylic home to demonstrate what it's like. And they highlight these devices and the back wall lights up to show you know, the baby stirs and, and you, know, you see an a animation go across and the Sonos comes on, for instance. Um, so their objective is to teach consumers uh, how their life can be better with connected devices and then send them home with some of those devices and 
then they recommend when you get home, download Unomi. You know when you open Unomi, you know you'll see recommendations from Hope and House of the, the things that you saw uh, demonstrated in the store. So that's one way, uh, one example of how we're working with big partners to tell our story. Um, so we need to make money. Uh, we're interested in that. We think it's really important for this technology to be <coughs> accessible. The app should be free. Um, but, uh, but our observation uh, so far uh, of users using Unomi is that 30% of users who use Unomi um, acquire three or four additional devices to the ones that they had when they installed Unomi you know, within 90 days of downloading the app. Uh, usually, most of them within the first month. That's a lot. So we know that we are influencing and we are stimulating additional purposes. What purchases? Once you live with connectivity and you see that when I come home, lights come on, suddenly, oh, I need some more lights, and some of the more of those connected lights. I need them on the front porch now. Or when you experience that music plays when you wake up in the morning or tells you the weather, tells you what your first meeting is going to be, uh, then you're like, oh, I should have one of those in my bedroom. So, uh, so that's very interesting and uh, leads us to uh, where we're going next, which is to uh, leverage the influence that we have, even passively, uh, to be a bit more active and suggest, basically, you know, we have a lot of data about uh, consumers and what devices they have and how they use them. And so if we see that you're the guy that has the job going up and you're using it in the morning to switch on a few uh, Belkin Wemo switches, but people like you have Sonos, we know you don't have that because we've seen your network. We can suggest to you, you might like to add Sonos speakers to this and when you, when you do, it will announce the weather and play music in the morning. And we uh, have predictable affinity metrics that tell us that you're likely to want that. And if you buy that, we're entitled to a commission from either the retailer or the manufacturer. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of where things are today. Some interesting announcements that are coming up, and I won't go into a lot of detail on this because they're upcoming announcements. Um, but, uh, but in addition to the automation things, uh, what happens when I wake up, when I arrive home, when I get a phone call, those are very useful. We're starting to surface ways for users to then kick off their own routines because sometimes, you want to watch a movie when you want to watch a movie. You're not going to schedule it for 8 o'clock every Saturday night. So we want simple, very good user experience ways for you to input uh, into the system uh, those types of controls. Voice is a big one. So you'll see some interesting announcements coming from us how you can just use your voice. It says, run the uh, movie routine now, and the, movie, and the television comes on, the lights dim, the temperature adjusts. Uh, or use widgets on your phone, smart watches, and various types of multi-purpose buttons for that. So that'll be a very exciting thing for us to announce here in the next uh, several weeks. Um, uh, obviously, more device support. We're adding new ones all the time. Uh, and uh, some additional really exciting go-to-market partnerships with some of those folks that I mentioned. Um, and then also, all the things that are possible uh, with the Unomi application took a lot of infrastructure to build that in the cloud and on the phone. Uh, we, you will see us in the next year start to open that platform for other people to build on. We have a lot of uh, great high-level uh, convenient things that both run in the cloud as well as on the phone that make it really fast to deliver new uh, vertical solutions uh, and services like energy management or elder care that uh, you can layer on top of this and white label a lot of this you know, technology and even device makers uh, will begin to use it to basically uh, expand the utility of their devices that says, hey, not only is it a lock, but it's a lock that when you unlock it and get home, uh, it starts, it turns on the lights and plays music for you. Or when you lock it on your way out, it shuts down the house. Uh, that's something that a lock natively wouldn't do, but a simple integration with Unomi certainly suddenly turns all those things on and really changes the value proposition of the connected device. So we're very excited about that. and our roadmap going forward. Um, that's all I've got for you tonight. Uh, maybe one more time. <laughs>